Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Michael, uh, and I'm the president editor-in-chief of the Columbia Daily Spectator. Uh, so about a year ago, we made a decision to go to a weekly print model and, and abandon our daily print edition. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you guys a bit about that. Uh, couldn't be happier with that decision. Really proud of it and think that all of you should do it too. Uh, so I just wanted to talk about the factors in our decision. This is one of them. Um, and uh, try to discuss what maybe what was unique to Spectator that allowed us to do this. Um, so this is our print revenue uh, from 2006 to 2016. I don't know if this looks familiar to any of you, but this is a pretty scary number. Um, so Spectator costs about 300000 to operate. So after that 2011 uh, plateau, you know, we were really done for. So, so uh, if your focus is on print revenue, as many college newspapers are, uh, you leave yourself open to this type of decline that will really just destroy your ability to invest in your content. Um, when we were making, actually, so the, I should mention, I started in 2006, but we were even higher before that. Uh, so there was really no need for a student business team or any thinking beyond uh, print revenue because we had so much of it. Um, costs were really never much more over 300000 so everything was great. Uh, and we didn't, until this, these declines happened, we didn't really do any thinking about our revenue streams at all. Uh, so, and that really started in 2013. So if we hadn't done anything, if we hadn't changed the way we thought or the way we made money, this is uh, what would have happened. Um, <coughs> So and, uh, Spectator is not fortunate to have a multi-million dollar endowment like, like some of our colleagues. So uh, really, any years like this would have would really uh, shut our lights off. Um, and we didn't want to do that. Uh, so the um, decision that, uh, that and when you have a graph like this, it really makes you question what your purpose is um, and who you're trying to provide value to. So actually, mainly when you have a graph like this, uh, I should also mention that our print readership was very low. Um, I don't have counts before the one I did, so uh, it was less than 1,000 um, in terms of pickups a day uh, over a three-week period that I personally went and, and looked because as I was evaluating making this, this decision, I felt that was a really important factor to know personally. So when your print advertisers are telling you that there's no value in your product and your readers are telling you that there's no value in your product because so few of them are, are reading, um, again, it really made us question why we wanted to put out the paper every day. Um, and that's a really important word, I think, trying to create value both for your advertisers and your readers. Uh, for those of you who still print every day, maybe your graph doesn't look like this yet, but it will soon. Um, because <laughs> I know and that very few college students read print papers. Um, uh, you know, uh, circulation varies, but even if you're printing thousands of copies, let's say you're printing 10,000 copies, I really can't imagine uh, more than 5,000 people are really picking that up, and that's very generous. If you're doing well online, you're well above that. Uh, I would say that probably a good newspaper with a strong engagement team and strong content should get 10x the number of UVs online that they do at their college campus in terms of print paper. Um, and that's higher value for your advertisers. Uh, so from our perspective, we could have, in 2012, uh, tried to save the print. Uh, that could have been a decision we made that we would go to every single advertiser and every single student and say, hey, there's value here. Uh, read it. Advertise it in it. But I think for us, we really came to understand that the digital value <coughs> prospect was much better for everybody. Uh, so in terms of preparing to make that decision, um, you can't just do it right away. Because if you are so, so dependent on print as we were in 2006, and that headline's kind of misleading because that was the same until 2012, really, um, you can't just cut the print because then you don't have any money. Uh, so even if you're not printing, you should have other costs. Uh, hopefully, maybe you have a couple of adult staffers, maybe you have a work study program, reimbursements for, for parties, you know, really has a wide variety of costs beyond uh, your printing budget. Um, and when we cut when we cut our daily print edition, uh, there was a lot of press. And uh, Yale's publisher said something very interesting, which is that 85% of Yale's revenue was still print. Um, and I think that's probably pretty consistent in this room. Uh, if 85% of your revenue is still print, uh, you're not going to have much left. So the thought process we had was that we needed to make this not true for us anymore. OK. So. Uh, this is revenue created just by our student business team. We also have an adult manager who uh, mainly handles print revenue. So as you can see, 100% uh, growth two years consecutively, 100% digital, or non-print. Uh, so mainly digital advertising and live events. 
Um, and again, it was really important to us that when we uh, try to really engage in this growth to offset losses in print advertising, that we did it in a way that was not tied to the print edition, so that in the really sure case that we eventually we would cut the print edition, we wouldn't lose this revenue. Um, really briefly how we did it, uh, major focus on digital advertising, so when students talk to local businesses, print is not mentioned unless they bring it up. Um, again, going to, a, to an advertiser and saying, you know, your ad will be seen 30,000 times by 10,000 people is a lot more powerful than maybe since we print 3,000 copies, you'll get to seen 3,000 times, which again is not true. Um, so we really uh, focused on selling out 100% of our digital ad inventory. Um, we started creating new websites, and I'll get back to that in a second. Um, events are really key to us, um, that if you can create some sort of information that is necessary to experience live, um, that's great for students. People will come out, we get hundreds of people at most of our events, and advertisers will sponsor it. Um, we also did a little bit of, of, of fundraising as well, um, trying to think about what spectator's value was, again, to our students. So hopefully most of you have somewhat of a two-part mission. One is that you educate the people who work on your paper, um, and that you educate and inform the people in your, on your college campuses. Um, and really, the overarching point is that uh, we needed to make Spectator uh, the number one place for information giving at Columbia. And if you are just focusing on a print newspaper, I would contend that you're probably not the best, uh, the most important information source uh, because students are not looking in your print edition. Um, so for us, we uh, really had a, you know, a, a refocused effort on our, on our digital presence uh, with our website, these events. We also created some new websites that focused on some kind of non-journalistic information giving, um, helping students pick what classes they're, they're, uh, they're taking, helping students decide where to eat. Um, things like that are still very important to students and are some kind of information giving where students are, uh, or so we are leveraging students' trust in us to provide accurate information about things uh, and really going to advertisers and saying, between all seven of the things we do online, uh, you can be sure that if you advertise in us, people are going to see your ad. Um, and I could never go to an advertiser and selling a print ad, ad and say the same thing, because it's just not true. Um, this is the result. Uh, so when we made the decision to stop printing, we were only 30% print. Uh, so that really allowed us to shed off about I think 125,000 in costs, uh, while only sacrifice, well, the theory being only sacrificing the 30%. Uh, something I should mention that the uh, Emerald mentioned that we found very true, you really are, if, if, you, if you're not going to zero days in print, if you're going to one or two days, you really should be able to capture most of your print revenue. There are some cases that are, you know, print ads are very timely, but overall you should be able to fit in your week's worth of advertising in that one to two days. So you're, you're getting rid of lots of costs but not sacrificing all your revenue. Um, so this was our 2015 projected net income if we printed five days a week. <laughs> there you go, oh, sorry, 2014. So this was our net income in 2014 relative to a minus 34K uh, projection. Um, I prefer this. Um, okay, so what did we do with that money? So first, obviously, we, we didn't have a deficit anymore. That was great. Very importantly, we created a $60,000 work study program. Um, this is the, uh, what I feel is one of my best accomplishments and contributions to Spectator. It's very important, um, and if you all don't have a work study program, you should really try to figure out a way to do it. Um, doing, you know, uh, assuming that students are putting in lots of work to your papers, which obviously they are, doing that, your classes, and a 20-hour work study job is really impossible. And even if it is possible, it's not healthy. Uh, so for our roughly 40 students, they just do Spectator as their work study job, um, and that's been really great. Uh, we have a more diverse staff, we have a healthier staff, um, and again, this isn't really just um, you know, for the sake of diversity or for students' health, it's about your coverage too, because if you don't have uh, students uh, from a wide variety of backgrounds, you're not going to be telling all the stories on campus and not doing your job. Um, so I uh, just wanted to spend the rest of the, uh, the time talking about you know, what's lost or gained by, by cutting your print non-financially, um, because uh, you know the everything I've talked about was really focused on the finances, but I really do feel that it's better for your coverage as well. Uh, I think something I've, I've seen from colleagues at other schools is that when you have a print paper, you have to fill all the pages. So sometimes there are stories you're not really that proud of, but you gotta run anyway. Or you run full page house ads or other ridiculous things like that. 
Um, when you're online, you don't need to do that. Um, so spectators tried to limit uh, what we refer to as the event story. You know, so and so spoke today. The sophomore Sally said it was a great event. Um, so we, you know, we try to do that as, as little as possible. Um, we had a lot of production focused roles, um, mainly in news that we have repurposed to reporting. We you know we don't have staffers who come in and do uh, print headlines or things like that anymore. Those people are out doing more reporting, better stories. Um, in terms of our uh, design staff, um, in, in terms of visual content, uh, those staffers are less focused on things like page layout and more focused on graphics uh, that work online, especially creating graphics that are native to the web. And I think everyone has seen those graphics that are made for print that end up looking really tiny online or really terrible. Um, so that required a lot of change for our design staff, and, and you shouldn't sugarcoat that because people who have really only InDesign skills are going to have to learn some new stuff. Um, but that worked out really well. Uh, we had about 15 people learn and spent a lot of time learning uh, graphic design and are really happy for it. Um, we still have a weekly paper. So again, that serves as a way for us to keep a lot of our print advertising despite shutting off 80% uh, of the costs. Also, it allows us to, for our, our design team to take more time creating layouts. Uh, so we try, uh, you know, with some level of success to decide the lead story Sunday night, Monday morning, to give the design team days to do a creative layout for our front page. Um, and again, more work study, uh, which I discussed. So um, I think the, the key takeaway uh, that I really want, want you all to remember is that um, it's very hard to cut the print. There's a lot of tradition, a lot of adults in the mix, professors, alumni. Uh, I don't know how many of you are independent, but you know, administration involved. But uh, for us, we remembered that we were a student paper, and having a print product prevented us from providing the best values to our students and to our advertisers, and therefore it had to go. Um, and financially, uh, we're doing much better, as I said. Our stories are much better. Obviously, that's a real, you know, really a qualitative judgment, but I know it's true, uh, and I'm really happy about it. Um, so I don't know if I have time, but... Uh, Awesome. Okay, Great. Thank Thanks.